My name is Grant Aston. I am a sculptor who mainly works with clay and my work is often informed by architecture and the body and biology. A lot of my work is informed by buildings I see around London such as the South Bank Centre and the uh, train shed at St Pancras. The starting points for all my work is structure, is how things go together, is a fascination with material. Another thing that's quite fascinating is biology, the structure of the body, bones, flesh, that kind of classic art obsession I suppose, uh, things like life drawing, what we are, what we're made of and the world around us. Two of the pieces I've been demonstrating have involved um, lots of shapes inspired by a plough I saw in the Peak District um, on a gate, this kind of large farm gate and the plough was painted with hammerites to kind of keep it uh, protected from the elements and it had this great kind of shape of the, the kind of cutting blade, this kind of curve to it and it was very much like the kind of sculpture you see in the Tate Modern or um, it was a very, like a piece of modern art on a gate in the Peak District in the middle of nowhere. So I, I generally start off rolling out a slab of clay. The clay is often quite firm or if it's from reclaim I'll have to beat it out so I'll be hitting it with a rolling pin. Um, uh, it, I guess it makes the, sh the clay into a flatter shape but also it compresses the clay so if you're adding clays of different dryness together it's a way of kind of blending them together. Now then I'll cut the shapes into the clay so I'll take templates of things that I've seen around that are quite exciting like a flying buttress or a, a shoulder blade something like that. I'll cut that into the clay and I mix that up with a kind of freehand technique of, of kind of drawing into the clay to get shapes with potential that I can then build into a form. So when I've cut the shapes and added the walls, I'm making sure I use quite a lot of slip to give the piece strength but also to indicate how it's made, how it goes together. I've essentially got a kit, a kit of things to, to play with, to explore with, a kind of language of shapes which I can then take to build with and that is uh, in a kind of, in, it's, it's like being a child in the sense that you're playing but also um, you have a, a, an agenda, you have a, a path of investigation to follow. So I'll start assembling the pieces together and have something where I've got 10, 11, 12 shapes put together. Initially, um, the piece has a theme or quite often has a theme to start with, but it will start to evolve as I start making it. Probably one of the most important things for me when making the work is um, there's a large element of drawing within the work. So when I'm adding new pieces together, um, they kind of, there's a tension in the line. And when you're using this kind of hand-building method that I do use, essentially creating girders, then you can twist and you can bend and it, it kind of slides around itself. Um, and then it gets joined together then you can kind of bash it around um, and really kind of engage with the shape um, in a very free way uh, and in a very immediate way. I guess the reason I choose to continue making in clay is because of that kind of sense of materiality. Clay is different to metal, it's different to wood in the sense that it's like a piece of architecture. I guess that's why I'm interested in buildings so much. You have to think about the foundation, you have to think about how it goes together to support its own weight. It's important that from the start of a sculpture you're thinking about how you're going to move it around, how you're going to manipulate it. With clay you have inbuilt limitations to what you can do with it. And I think that creates the language of ceramics.